Hi, I'm Stacy Revere, and I'm the instructional coach here at the middle school and the high school. I'm here with Larry DeBose from the middle school and Dan Franklin from the high school, and we're here to talk to you a little bit about our PLC journey that we, um, the PLC conference that we went to this summer. Um, PLC is our professional learning community, and um, I guess I just wanted to talk briefly with where I'm at in my journey with the PLC process. Four years ago, I drank the Kool-Aid, the PLC Kool-Aid, and I um, talked with the instructional coaches, and they really tried to get us to focus on how we were teaching differently. And one of the things I remember they first talked to us about was working on our um, standards, how they wanted us to really break apart our um, standards and to get 10 essential standards. And I remember saying to them, how are we going to choose 10? There are a million of them. Are you kidding me? I have to choose 10? Um, and they were like, try it, just try it, you could do this. So we chose 10 of them that we thought every student had to know before they moved on to the next grade level. Well, during this process, they then asked us to come up with a common formative assessment. And again, I balked and, and got a little frustrated, and, and, um, but I tried it. So we came up with these common formative assessments where we had to pre-test the kids and then post-test the kids. And then we all had to all come together and share this information. And I remember complaining quite a bit about how much time it was going to take. And, and again, I struggled through that. Um, but one of the things that I started to notice was that our collaboration time started to change in how we were talking to each other as, as colleagues. Um, one of the things that, that I noticed was we would sit down with this data, this post-test data, and we would see that I would have 72% of my kids that would pass the test, and another teacher would have 95% of their kids passing the test. And so our conversations changed into, what did you do differently? We're both teaching the same standard. How did you do it differently? There were vulnerable times when I felt inadequate as a teacher, but during that collaboration time, we began to really help support one another. We're all doing the same things. We're all good at doing it, but that sharing and that collaboration changed. So going to the PLC conference, I felt like I had a really good background knowledge of what was going on. and. I was really excited when the um, guest speakers were talking about the process and the breakout sessions because Tippecanoe Valley is on the right path in this process. We are on board with what's going on. And I was really excited to see that. Last year at the middle school, we started this whole um, catch-up cafe, whereas as soon as a student didn't turn in an assignment, they were held accountable for that immediately. They had a working lunch, and they had to finish that assignment. We did not let one student go without turning turning in those assignments. Again, great, great place to be. At the high school, we started this Viking Success. And in our Viking Success program, each um, teacher has a small group of students and they would take those students and they would make them or they would work with them we would run an F report so we'd find out the kids who were failing mm -hmm. we would work on the work with those kids and get them um, the help and the supports they needed to complete those assignments we would set goals with those students we would check in it was more personal learning that was going on. So I really feel that we're on the right path. Um, my big takeaway from this, however, is, um, and I think I always knew it, but it was just reaffirming of our PLC isn't the Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday meetings that we have. The PLC is something that happens within us. It's the change that we have in our hearts for how we're talking about students. We believe at Tippecanoe Valley that all students can succeed. It's not, it doesn't matter if you come from poverty. It doesn't matter if you're an English language learner. It doesn't matter what your home life is. It doesn't matter if you have an IEP. All of our students can learn. And in this professional learning community, we all need to drink the Kool-Aid and believe in that. Um, so that was my big takeaway from the process. Now, 
um, Larry here has gone to the PLC pro process too. Larry, was your takeaway similar to mine or was it was it different? What was your experience with it? Absolutely, like you, I ended up finding that the word PLC embodied, we're getting together Tuesday or Thursday morning. Oh, this is when I can be lesson planning. This is when I can be grading and getting caught up on my work. And I started to realize that PLC embodies everything we do. It's not just one thing. It's the teachers that get together, the community, the administrators that pull together, making sure all students learn at a high level. Within 15 minutes of the conference, I had this paradigm shift. And the entire conference, I ended up sitting under the teaching of Dr. Anthony Muhammad. Grit by his teaching, I'd recommend anyone out there go through, find his videos on YouTube, how he turned an inner city school in Detroit, Michigan, just outside Detroit in Flint, Michigan, 3,000 plus suspensions a year, junior high school, to a national blue ribbon school in six years. What did he do was implement the PLC process. He ended up seeing that, that teachers uh, were all working together, seeing what students knew, and they were also putting in appropriate interventions to make sure they weren't leaving the classes without certain meetings. He had a number of different policies he, he put into place that did an awesome, awesome job. As I sat under his teaching, I started to ask myself three questions. Where are we as a school? Where are we going and how do we get there? And I think everyone at the seat should ask themselves those same questions. We get together this year, think about how do we get to a place where every student at Tippy Canoe Valley Middle School, high school, elementary school, uh, is achieving at high levels. Every student is being, being noticed. Every student is given the opportunity to succeed. Great, great. Thank you. Dan, what, what, what was your big takeaway from this? Or where are you at in this journey, I guess? Uh, a few takeaways. Um, for starters, I'll echo what you said. Um, Dr. Dufour gave us a nice pep talk. Mm, yeah. And and I realized that, that we are on the right track. Um, too often, lately, education has gotten a black eye or a kick in the hind end, as I usually say it. And um, uh, he kind of reaffirmed that, that we are doing our job. And it, we... We have a, a lot of good things going for us, and it led me to believe that, that PLC is a, uh, the direction we need to be going here at Valley. Um, I think as educators, we make things too difficult. At least I do, and I complicate things. Um, and I was really struck by the simplicity of the, the four tenets of PLC. Um, what do we want the students to learn? How do we know they're gonna learn it? Or they have learned it. What do we do if they haven't learned it? And what are we going to do after they've learned it? Um, and it struck me as if, if it could be that simple, even a guy like myself could could understand and implement it. Um, and I was uh, I was left at the conference refreshed and uh, kind of invigorated and motivated to uh, to go come back this year and try some new things. Okay, you know that's a good way, I, I guess. What, where do you feel that you want to go from it, from, from here? Where do you want to go? Yeah, I th for me, another big takeaway was making sure I'm pulling with other teachers and that we are finding and, 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 and responding in mm -hmm. a timely way when students not learning something, what intervention if Ketchup Cafe doesn't work? Uh, what's what's our next tier of interventions? Right. Dr. Mohammed, he had about four tiers at his school because their cafe didn't catch the frequent flyers. They ended right. up going to a second tier where they mm -hmm. had a specialist that would work with students during mm -hmm. lunch and he would tailor problems to it. After that, the third tier, he ended up having someone that worked with students through emotional difficulties mm -hmm. and things that didn't get caught so other things that would would block the students and then uh, a fourth tier he ended up bringing everyone in and, and then only at that time would a student be referred to a special ed if they couldn't mm -hmm. if they couldn't achieve at the high level and brought his special ed numbers down from about 21 percent to six percent in six years uh, so i think intervention seeing yeah. seeing what we can do as a school mm -hmm. to catch the frequent flyers and catch the students who who like Mr. Franklin said, what what do we do if students are not learning, and and how do we address that? All right. How about you? What do you see our next step is here at the high well, school? I guess I'd I'd like to take it 
for me personally, I, I need to work on my formative assessment. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that really struck me was that uh, they compared summative assessment versus formative assessment as being an autopsy versus <laughs> a, a physical exam. And um, I was very proud of um, the finals that I'd made and the summative assessments that I'd made, but uh, this conference made me realize that uh, at that point, you know, if it, it's too late. You need right. formative assessments to kind of evaluate where the students are at. And I'm not just necessarily talking about tests and quizzes, but just simple things. Um, I work in the shop all the day with students, and I'm always always making on the spot corrections and right. stopping students and coaching more mm -hmm. or less. And I realize that that's valuable, right. very valuable. Right. Not only in for me, the teacher, to see what maybe I could do differently when they don't understand, but also to to give the students valuable feedback too. Mm -hmm. They need to know whether they're on the right track or not right. also. Good, good. And I guess I just want to conclude with, um, so many teachers have asked me, what is, when are we finished with PLCs? When mm -hmm. is this going to be over? And I guess the, the big thing is our professional learning will never be over. We're never finished doing this. We continue to grow and change and learn from one another. We have such a vast expert um, staff that we need to continue to help support one another. So that's it. That's it. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Chris Messersmith with RTC TV and I'm here to interview some of the new teachers at Tippecanoe Valley High School. First of all, this is Kylie Crabb here. So Kylie, tell me what grade you're teaching. I'll be teaching fourth grade at Mentone Elementary. Fourth grade, okay. And tell me a little bit about yourself. I grew up in a small town, Petersburg, Indiana, very similar to Mentone. And I've been in Mentone for almost six years. I have a husband and three children. Six years, okay. and. One of the important questions I want you to answer today is, what inspires you to teach? Um, I think, you know, my mom was a teacher, and so that was a huge inspiration. I would go to school all day and then come home and play school all night. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of really great teachers um, right. as I went through school, and a lot of people that just challenged me and pushed me, and I wanted to do that for other kids. Right, and t speaking of these good teachers that you and I probably both had, what do you want to bring to, to the table at Tippecanoe Valley High School? Um, I want to be a positive teacher, a teacher that is encouraging. Um, you know, I want my kids to feel safe. I want mm -hmm. them to feel respected and know that, um, you know, they can come to me with, with whatever. Absolutely. And, um, and just be an important part of their lives. Right. Well, is there anything else that you want to say before we uh, bring the next teacher in? I'm just excited to be back in the classroom. I've been out of the classroom for six years and been at home with my own kids, and I'm anxious to get back into the classroom. Well, that's excellent. We look forward to seeing you around the Tippecanoe Valley community, and uh, I hope you have a great first year here. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. And now I'm here with Mike Jones. Mike, <laughs> talk to me about um, what you're going to teach here and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm going to be the high school agriculture science and business teacher here at Tippecanoe Valley. Um, I'm originally from here. I'm a 1993 graduate of Tippecanoe okay. Valley. I uh, lived my entire life here. Uh, I spent the last 17 years uh, teaching high school agriculture at Argus High School right down the road. So, Well, that's great to have a local coming to educate some of the students around the area. Uh, so tell me what inspires you to become a teacher. Uh, a lot of it had to do with my family. Uh, I have a lot of teachers in my family. Uh, when I was in college, I, I kind of saw how happy my dad was teaching mm -hmm. high school ag down at North Miami, so I decided to try teaching high school agriculture, and I've loved it ever since. Absolutely. That's great. So do you have any special techniques or anything that you want to bring to the table here at Valley? Uh, I guess the uh, one thing I'd like to bring is I'd like to change the culture of the ag education here, mm -hmm. uh, making a more competitive and career development events and getting out in the community and having kids work with uh, the numerous amount of ag business right. businesses that we have here in our own community. Awesome. Well, it's great to have somebody that wants to push the envelope here at Tippecanoe Valley High School. This is Mike Jones uh, about to work be uh, teaching here at Tippecanoe Valley High School. Thanks for coming in, Mike. 
And now I'm here with Don Stone. Don, tell me a little bit about yourself and what you're going to be teaching here. Well, first off, I'm going to be the uh, special education teacher at the eighth grade at okay. the middle school. Um, I'm a dad of eight kids. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a retired Marine. So um, I think special education just kind of roams into Uncle Sam's most guided children. Yeah. So um, that's why I'm here. So tell me a little bit about what inspires you to become a teacher in general. <laughs> um, kindergarten cop. I cannot yeah. tell a lie. Oh, um, yeah. I was in Marine Corps and I saw a kindergarten cop and I was like, I can do that. Yeah. So kind of crazy way around. That's what happened. I love it. I love it. So do you have any special techniques that you're going to bring to the table here at Tippecanoe Valley? Well, I don't know about techniques, but I'm um, a little different, a lot outside the box. Um, my goal in my classroom is my kids to be safe. Right. Today's society, a lot of the kids, especially the population that I teach, they don't have a lot of safety. They don't know where they're comfortable, who's got their backs. Right. And um, my number one goal in my classroom has always been safety of my children yep well it's good to have somebody that's always thinking about safety around here because yeah, you can never have too much of that uh, this is don stone going to be a middle school special ed teacher here at Tippecanoe new valley uh, thanks for coming for this interview today. not a problem thanks a lot yep. here now with me is beth landis beth why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you'll be teaching here at Tippecanoe new valley okay i've um taught 24 and a half years elementary first wow. grade okay. And I am moving here to Tippy Valley to the Facts Department, Family and Consumer Sciences. Okay. And where did you uh, move here from? I was at Whitco. Okay. But I've always lived here in the Valley right. District. That'll save you a little bit of a road trip, right? 60 miles a day. <laughs> yeah. So, so what inspires you to become a teacher? Um, my first grade teacher, Mrs. Bunnell at Akron, mm -hmm. first grade. The room is no longer there now right. because it's okay. been demolished. But I just... I fell in love with her, and um, she was like a mother hen with a bunch of little chicks. Very nice. So and I loved her her leadership, her softness, but yet firmness. Mm -hmm. So that's what made me want to do elementary. And then last fall, it was just time for a change. And right. then this job opened up in January. So I've actually been here for a semester. Well, that's very cool. So is there, speaking of this first grade teacher of yours, is there any techniques that you might take from her that you'll bring to Tippecanoe Valley? I think um, being a good listener. Mm -hmm. So many times people do so much more talking than listening and Absolutely. building relationships. And with being a family consumer science teacher, those relationships are so important. Learning those skills is something that will take these high school kids mm -hmm. into life and beyond. Right. Is there anything that you look forward to the most coming here? I'm back home. Back home. <laughs> Can't beat that. I am back home. I am so happy to be back, part of the Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation, and I'm just so thankful, and I have so much that I want to offer uh, my high school students and just the community in general. The community did so much for me. Um, growing up, um, some teachers even helped donate so I could go to college with funding. And I just, I just want to give back so much because this community has made me who I am. Well, that's great, Beth. That's a great uh, employee to have here, a great teacher to have in the Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation. So thanks for coming for this interview. Today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And now I'm here with Precious Brenton. Precious, will you tell me a little bit about um, where you came from and what got you into teaching? Yeah, I'm originally from Toledo, Ohio. I'll be teaching sixth and seventh grade math at the middle school. Okay. Um, I was actually homeschooled. My brother and I were homeschooled until I was in eighth grade. Um, so my mom taught us, obviously, that's what mm -hmm. homeschooled means. Um, and I just, I don't know, she always inspired me to love education. She's, she read to me from the time I was a baby. Um, and I used to play teacher with my little brother at home, so that was probably one of the reasons. I guess I've, I've always loved teaching since the time I was young, and I really like writing on whiteboards. So. Well, hey, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing to get into then, I yeah. guess. <laughs> well, you said that you were homeschooled, so is there anything specific that your mom has uh, got given you that you'll bring to the table here at Valley? Um, yeah, I mean... Definitely just um, a love for literacy, even yep. even though I'll be teaching math, I think literacy is really important. Mm -hmm. And um, 
yeah, just, I mean, obviously she loved me because she was right. my mom. So just loving on my students like she did. Exactly. And I think that's a great thing to have your mom as your teacher. So you feel that closer connection with your teacher. And I think you'll be able to bring that to the classroom as well. Mm -hmm. So this is Precious Brenton. Thanks for coming in today for this interview. Like. And now I have with me Alicia Beachy. Alicia, can you tell me where you came from and what you plan to bring to the table here at Valley? I am originally from small town Arcola, Illinois, and I am looking forward to um, just interacting with the community here at Valley. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, from what I've heard, small town community, Absolutely. and that's where I came from. That's and so great. I'm looking forward to just getting involved in that and just um, letting my students get involved in the community as well. That's great. Um, tell me a little bit about what you'll be teaching and some of the subjects you'll be teaching. I will be teaching fourth grade at Mentone, and uh, all of the subjects are included in that, so math and reading. We also get to do Indian history in fourth grade, mm -hmm. so I'm really excited about that. Well, that should be exciting. So what inspired you be to become a teacher here? Um, it was actually one of my own teachers. Um, she kind of called it out in me. She said, you, you would be a really great teacher, and I had never really thought about it before. But then from that point on, uh, teachers were just giving me opportunities mm -hmm. to to further those skills and to just really discover how much I really did enjoy teaching. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like you're, you found your calling and mm -hmm. this is a great place to be. Um, and I'm sure everyone looks forward to seeing you teach here. Mm -hmm. Thank Thanks you. for coming for this interview Thank today. You. Mm -hmm. And now I'm here with Katie Yours. Katie, will you tell me where you came from and what you'll be teaching here at Valley? Well, I'm originally from a small town outside of Marion, Indiana. I went to Eastbrook High School yep. and I'll be teaching third grade at Mentone Elementary some youngsters there that'll be fun so mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about what inspired you to become a teacher well when I was in high school I was very involved in the FFA and I did a lot of leadership activities and through those activities I became involved in mentoring other students mm -hmm. and I think that just kind of sparked an interest in me and in working with other people and helping them to learn new things and to grow themselves, basically. Hey, those are the best kinds of people to have as teachers, I say, right? So, Katie, what kind of new things do you plan to bring to Mentone Elementary? Well, I hope to just bring some new ideas. Um, I'm very involved with technology. I love to use technology in my classroom, and I'm very excited to maybe have some new ideas of ways we can in incorporate technology in our lessons, and just anything I can do to help. That's absolutely great. I love to hear that classrooms are implementing technology because that is a, a huge boost in the education system, in my opinion. So it's glad to hear that. Um, well, thanks for coming in today, Katie, and thanks Thank for you. coming for this interview. And now I'm here with Tina Berg. Tina, tell us where you came from and what you'll be teaching here at Tippecanoe Valley. Um, I live in a little town called Grovertown, Indiana. It's about 45 minutes northwest of Tippecanoe Valley. I went to mm -hmm. school at Knox, graduated in 1997. Um, married, my son just graduated from high school, and I will be teaching eighth grade math, pre algebra, and algebra at Very the middle school. Very interesting. Well, I like math, but until those numbers get involved, that gets kind of tricky, right? Yes, and remembering all the formulas. <laughs> yeah. So, what, what are you going to bring to the table here at Valley? Um, I hope to bring a passion for learning, especially math, because the famous question is why do I need to learn this? Mm -hmm. And what's the purpose? math is used every day so regardless of whether or not we're thinking the formulas in our head we are using math so I hope to bring that passion. Yeah you, you hear that question a lot by a lot of students mm -hmm. and really it's about the critical thinking and the problem-solving skills. Yes. But uh, so what what inspired you to become a teacher? Um, like a lot of the teachers you've interviewed I have family members who are teachers however mm -hmm. it was a fourth grade teacher that inspired me to become a teacher because he showed that compassion he showed right. the love for learning and just making sure you understood something before moving on and you knew it before you did anything else absolutely well that's great to hear you'll, I'm sure you'll bring that same compassion for this teaching position that you hope so you've gotten well thanks for coming in today Tina for this interview and I good luck this year thank you and now I'm here with Angie Parson Angie tell me where you came from and where you're going to be teaching here at Tippecanoe Valley I'll be teaching second grade at Akron Elementary School, and I've lived in Akron my entire life. I went to Akron Elementary and graduated from Valley in 95, and my kids go to Valley now. So you're familiar with the area and the school system here. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a great thing to have as a new hire. Um, so tell me what you'll be able to bring to the table at Akron Elementary. 
I really hope to just inspire and empower kids and help them realize their potential to be successful leaders in our community. Mm -hmm. That's great to have. Well, what inspired you to become a teacher? Different teachers I've had through the years here at Valley, I mean, they've really had a powerful impact on my life and Absolutely. I want to have that impact. So is there anything specific that you're looking forward to in your first year teaching? Just getting in the classroom getting and having classroom. fun. and. Yeah. Well, we look forward to seeing you in the community, and I hope you have a great first year there. Thank you. Yep, thanks.